Hey everybody, um, so I am finally getting around to doing a vlog um, about my Swazi trip last month. Gosh, last month because it's May. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm so sorry it's taken me so long to do this. Um, life has gotten just a little bit busy here in Gainesville and I'll save that for a vlog later. But I did want to talk to you a little bit about Swazi and kind of what that was um, was like and how the trip went and everything. Um, first off, did you know that there is a uh, flight from Atlanta to Johannesburg? There is. It's 16 hours long. I took it twice. It was it was interesting. It was a very long flight. But um, I watched like five movies there and like five movies back. So like I think I'm officially caught up with all the movies that have ever been made in the past year. Anyway, um, but yeah, Swazi was really great. It was actually surreal um, to a point just because I um, I went on my race. I think I was there right before Christmas on my race. And um, I just, yeah, it's, yeah, it was just surreal. Um, I remember, I actually, it was crazy. We were driving. So for the PBT trip, we came in a day before the parents did. So me, my co-leader and the long-term missionary that lives there that we'd be working with for the month, or sorry, for the week. Uh, um, we were at a grocery store and we were driving there. And um, I don't know, the Lord just helps me remember when I was on my race, um, we were sitting in the back of this pickup tr truck. We were just going to a, a care point to help do some gardening. And I remember sitting in the back of this truck and looking over these green rolling hills. And I didn't have my phone on me, didn't have anything with me. And I remember just being like, Lord, I want to remember this view because it's just so beautiful, so peaceful. I don't know. And it was just a moment. And I then <laughs> was driving to the grocery store and I saw those hills and I'm like, okay, God, I see you. I see what you're doing. Um, and it just reminded me that like the Lord gives us like random good gifts like that, even though we may never we think that we may never see them again. Um, just cause like I didn't like when I left Swazi on my race, I literally thought I'd never go back there. It's a very small country, hard to get to, doesn't really have any tourism, has no reason outside of me doing mission work to really go back there. Um, and I did. And so it was really crazy. There were times where we'd be in Manzini and I'd be like, I know where we are. This is crazy. Um, and things we didn't stay in Manzini for the PBT trip. We were in Nisoko, but Manzini is the biggest town nearby. So we had to go there to get groceries, things like that. So it was just really crazy, um, to have those moments. You're like, Oh, right. Um, and then also in those moments, there'd be times we were at the, the grocery store that we used to shop at when I was on the race. And I'd be like, where's my team? Oh, right. This isn't this race. This is PBT trip. So it was just funny sometimes because I would just assume my like teammates were around me and I'm like, that's not a thing anymore. So that was really, really funny. Um, but overall, the, the trip was absolutely great. Um, the, the racers were great. The parents were great. It was so cool to kind of see a different element of what the world race can do just because I never did my PBT trip. Um, I mean, obviously it was on the race, but um, my parents didn't come out. So it was really cool to kind of see a different aspect of what the race has. So that was awesome. Um, and it was just fun to get out. It was fun to just do missions again. Like on that 16 hours um, plane, that 16 hour plane flight that I had, um, I was actually nervous. I was like nervous to go back to care points and I was nervous to play with kids and I was just nervous for all of it. And it was so interesting because uh, well, you guys know I'm not a kids person. That's not my strong point, I guess you could say. Um, and I was like, oh man, I gotta go. I gotta go do this. And I gotta go play with these kids and like, you know, be there and love on them well. And how am I going to do that? And all of that. And, um, it just really reminded me of like, like when I got there, it was great. Like the kids were so much fun and it was fun to go play catch and play hopscotch and I don't know, color and draw and on all the things that we did. Um, and it just reminded me of like, something I really learned on the race was all you have to do is show up. Like the Lord has the rest of it, especially when it, I mean in life in general, but when I'm thinking about missions, when I'm thinking about volunteering, things like that, when we step out of our comfort zone, um, in anything really, um, all we need to be willing to do is show up and the Lord's got the rest. And so that was just a really good reminder, I think, just in life. Like, we can always be reminded of those things. So, um, so yeah. And and I and I saw that a lot in different ways. Not only was it playing with kids, but also um, leading a trip. I have never led a trip in my life. Like, I have never been a trip leader for anything, really. And so it was interesting. It definitely was outside my comfort zone. Definitely something I had to learn a lot. But my co-leader, Kelly, would just rocked it. She was so great. She's done like 
eight PBTs. So she's done this before, but it was so great. She was so helpful and helping me with leadership stuff or like, Hey, this is a good way to do, you know, this, or this is, Hey, you know, next time we do this, we should probably do it this way. She was just so gracious and all of that. So it was really cool to kind of learn, um, leadership for PVT, which will come in handy. Um, next September, I have another PVT in Thailand. So that was just really great. Um, but I definitely learned there's a lot, a lot I can learn in leadership and I'm really excited for that as well. Um, I'm just, as for just some highlights of the trip for me personally, um, obviously uh, being back in Swazi was great and so much fun. Um, and being at the care points was really fun too, obviously. Um, we would, we normally, well, what would happen is we would get there, we'd play with the kids for a little bit and then, um, they would get food, they would get fed. So they would all sit down with food and eat and have a meal. And then after there was actually, um, a teaching. So we'd all go inside. It's just a plain, big room, just plain, uh, chalkboard, um, cement floors, cement walls, pretty simple. And so we would do that. And, um, and normally all the kids want you to sit next to them or whatever. So we normally always end up sitting somewhere on these like benches, you know, all the parents and us, we'd all just kind of scatter and sit everywhere. Um, but one, one of the days that really stuck out to me, there was this girl who was like fifth grade. I think she told me that later that she was in fifth grade. And so she like waved me over. So I came over and sat next to her. And obviously like this whole teaching is in Saswati. It's not in English. Um, the leader would speak to us in English if like he wanted us to come up and lead a song or something, but mostly it was all in Saswati. And so I sat next to her she said, hi, I said, hi, you know, teaching started like normal. Um, and then she started actually translating it for me. So she'd sit there, she'd listen to him and then she turned to me and, and tell me what it was in English. And it was amazing. It was so heartwarming to see this fifth grade girl, like, translate for me and it was just she you could tell she was just thinking you could see the little you know gears okay what does this mean okay and then she'd tell me she was just so sweet oh and she had the be most beautiful smile ever so that was like one of the highlights for me just because i i don't know i just kind of fell in love with her she was just really great um so that was really really cool to see and to be part of um of that um and just also just seeing parents and racers just take the ball and run with it when it came to ministry. Like we, I definitely kind of stepped back. I was like there in case emergencies happened, but it was cool to see parents pray over like, or we would go do home visits and parents would pray over, you know, people and the racers and, and their parents would all be praying and, and have, you know, you know, different verses that came to mind or whatever, just to see them step out. And that was really, really cool too. Um, so overall the trip was absolutely amazing. Um, I loved it every minute of it. Um, and I'm trying to think, oh, also another thing that kind of hit me while I was there, which is really interesting, um, was just technology. Um, I think one was just because Swazi doesn't have much technology. They don't have, they don't really do Wi-Fi. They don't, I mean, they have cell phones and stuff, but anyway, um, whenever, whenever we were playing with the kids, they would, they would mimic us. Um, they would take pictures and like act like they're taking pictures. And at first it was really cute. Like, I'm like, oh, they're mimicking us. How fun. Um. But then it kind of took a different turn for me. Um, I was like, how often am I not present because in the moment because I'm taking a picture or because I want my phone out or because of this or because of that? And so that was something that I definitely took home with me, too. I mean, even now, I'm like, do I need to have my phone on me at all times? Like, do I need to be checking Facebook all the time? Do I need to be doing these things? And like, where is that line of like healthy and unhealthy for me personally? I'm not no judgment, like, but it's just one of those things where I was just like, huh. So I guess I kind of want to challenge you with that too. Like, I guess I have two challenges. One is, you know, like really like see how technology affects you. Like, are you missing things because you're always taking pictures of the things instead of just enjoying them um, or, or whatnot. And then my second one would just be also like, how can you step out in life now and be uncomfortable in situations and watch the Lord show up in those? and provide for you in those. I mean, it doesn't always have to be ministry. It doesn't always have to be volunteering. Um, it could be simple conversation, something like that. But those are the two things that I really walked away with um, from the Swazi trip that I was like, okay, I'm really going to like dig into these and see what these, see what these mean and like pray about it and see what the Lord leads me on these things. So um, I just wanted to share that with you as well. Um, so yeah, if you have more questions, I know I'm trying to make this video quite short because it was 10 days and so whatever. But if you have more questions about Swazi, please let me know. You can comment below or um, shoot me an email, Facebook me, whatever. I'd love to talk to you more about it. Again, thank you guys for your support monetarily and prayer. Um, 
without you guys, I couldn't be doing what I'm doing. So thank you so much. Um, and yeah, check out the next vlog. I should have it up in a week of um, some changes that are going to be happening around Gainesville. So hope you're all having a wonderful day and talk to you later.